morning, everyone, and thank you for coming, and thank you for, uh, uh, for Iron Source for uh, hosting us. Uh, my name is uh, Ronan Nier, I'm a, a general partner at uh, uh, Phil Adventures, uh, and uh, together with, uh, with uh, Vertex, uh, both of us shareholders in Perfecto Mobile, uh, we're happy to, to host you here. Um, I think that uh, Iran came up with the idea that uh, to take advantage of the fact that, that, that Keith, our uh, SVP of sales, is, is here in Israel, as we think that there are very, very few companies in Israel, uh, definitely on the B2B enterprise side, that has reached the scale um, of sales that uh, Perfecto has. Um, and I think that uh, many of the people that we meet on a daily basis, uh, you know, are kind of struggling with the, uh, I think that uh, the ups and downs that Perfecto has gone through the past uh, few years. And I think that since uh, Keith came on along four years ago, four years ago um, um, I think that we managed to uh, kind of uh, unlock some of the secrets uh, that needs to take a B2B company from kind of, you know, uh, getting the uh, few first customers or maybe even scaling to the, to the customers and actually how to uh, run a very large, scalable uh, sales organization that can reach uh, tens of millions of dollars of, uh, of revenue. And I think that uh, there's a lot for us in the industry to learn from, uh, uh, from Keith's experience and the things that we've done in Perfecto. So I wish you all, uh, uh, you know, the best and I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. Hi, so I'm Iran, the CEO of Perfecto. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say because I've already said everything else. Okay. But I do want to tell you one, one little anecdote and, that's, uh, and then we'll, we'll start. So I usually interview many of the salespeople we hire. And I usually ask the question, why do you want to join Perfecto? And they have two answers and they all have those two answers. The first one, is the general mumbo jumbo about how big the market is and it's great and it's going to be amazing and all that kind of stuff. And the other is that they, they all say, we heard this is the best sales school we will ever attend. And so I really believe in that, so that's why I thought this would be a good opportunity to share so with you. Hello. Thanks, Iran. How many people are salespeople here? You all are salespeople. Right? That's 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 kind of like the paradigm change that uh, that we got to go through. I think anyway to, to become a sales organization, sales companies, sales driven companies, customer value driven com customer companies is, is to become salespeople. Every one of us. So I am uh, not a consultant. Uh, I'm not. A, I don't really even know everything. I just uh, I just have done this. I do this for a living. This is what I do. Is sell and build sales teams, so um, I'm just going to talk from my experience and uh, it may be different from yours, so, um, so let's, just, let's just do it, that's fun. I thought I'd, I'd introduce myself a little bit before we, before we get going here. I've been doing this, um, I've been a sales person my, my entire career, I just do this together. I started selling at Xerox um, after I graduated college, going door to door in, uh, in a little zip code selling fax machines and, and printers and paper and toner and, stuff like that out of college. And then uh, I did that for a while and found software at a company called PTC. Uh, really foundational for me is where I learned a lot about, about the stuff we're gonna, we're gonna talk about. Has anyone heard of PTC before? Yeah, it was a CAD company founded in the, founded in the 90s. Uh, that was a rocket ship. It went from zero to a billion dollars out of a guy's garage on one product. It was a, it was a new way of doing CAD software, for a 3D CAD. And uh, it was transformational, but it had an amazing sales culture and an amazing sales process that evolved out of the idea that all we had to do to sell this thing was to get really high in the organization and demonstrate the value that it would create uh, and not the product. And when we did that, we, it, it changed everything. So we built a process and a methodology around very repeatable ways of doing this. And I'm going to share with you some of that stuff today. So that was that was big for me. And then. I started doing smaller companies at, at Blade Logic. Um, it was a, a configuration management, server configuration management company that had a great run. We got bought by BMC, and uh, and then I kind of really started to figure out how do you take small companies and, and, and make them big, and that kind of became my thing. Is I love that process of, of building and finding and, and, and taking small things and figuring out how to how to put it together. 
So in uh, Vita Perfecto, did, did it eventually sold that company to, to EMC and RSA after a few years, and now uh, now we're at Perfecto uh, building the building sales organization there. So I am a sales guy. That is uh, that is what I do. So let's talk about the selling environment a little bit. This will set the stage. I'll go as quickly as I can through this stuff. But selling has changed dramatically um, with you know in the, in the last few in the last few years in the last decade it's a different it's a different business than than it, than it was especially in technology. We think of things like SaaS, what that's done to the perpetual way of thinking, the way you buy. Um, think of selling. Try to think of selling not from how you sell, from inside out, but from the outside in. How the customers look at it. They they went to SaaS. Not because it was a great business model for us, but because they were tired of, of, of not getting value and they're trying to find ways in which they could subscribe to value without committing millions of dollars to, 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 uh, to, uh, to enterprise, to, to, to perpetual license, essentially one of, one of the big, one of the big, one of the biggest. So you can see how it's, it's, really, it's really changed. One big one is trust. Okay? The level of trust has, has, has really changed. They used to trust us, we used to own the delivery of information, and now we don't. Um, and customers educate themselves and, uh, on, on, on their product, and they don't, they don't believe in salespeople. Uh, and so there's, there's a significant amount of, 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 uh, of re, retraining that needs to go on as you, as you kind of approach, approach the market. So these are just some things, but it, it really makes a big difference, because solution selling used to work here. When I mean when I say solution selling, what I mean is go and do what which you, which what you may think of what salespeople do is they go and they look for initiatives and they look for budget and they look for projects right? and they look for gaps in the in the white space of technology to plug their product into. Okay, that's that's what solution selling. Value based selling is very different. Okay, so let's start with how how people buy. Okay. This, this chart, you see the emphasis here, and you see kind of two quadrants there. The, the, it's all about the customer, and it's all about the vendor, okay, on, on the far side. At the beginning of, of, and there's three kind of stages here. You determine requirements, and evaluate options, and you mitigate, you mitigate risk, okay? And, and, and the buying cycle goes that way. So the first thing you do when you want to buy something, whether it's a fridge or an enterprise piece of software, is you think about what you need. Do I need a new car? Is it broken? Can I get by with my one? If I need one, what do I need? Do I need a truck? All these, all these, all these kinds of things. You determine your requirements. And then you say, okay, I'm going to go and look at some cars, look at new fridges. You go and you evaluate your options. And once you decide, then you mitigate risk. And how, on left to your own device, how do you mitigate risk? There's one, there's one, there's one thing we do to, to mitigate risk. Hey, let's. Right. If I have to spend a million dollars, I don't have a million dollars. If, 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 you know, if I have to spend a lot of money, it's one thing. But if I only have to spend 10 bucks, there's no risk. And it doesn't matter the value. I can just decrease the cost. Traditional selling uh, has an intersection point of where the sales or the sales people get involved in the, in, the, in the buying cycle. And it's right where that target is today. Okay, so the dotted line is the involvement of, of the salespeople. The amazing thing about today is that customers, like I said, they, they educate themselves. By the time you get engaged, they've already decided what they want, what they think they have. Right? They say 83% of buyers in the enterprise, by the time they contact a sales organization, they've already decided what they want. And they're looking for you to demo, to help them with evaluating the technology, and then giving them a really nice price so that you can take a risk out, right? If someone can't come to their own conclusion as to why they need your product, uh, then you really need, you know, there's only one way to do it, is to evangelize. And so, typical sales selling is about demand fulfillment. I start at the target, and I work my way, and I work my way uh, to, to the right. Okay, I start there, and I go like this. Mr. Customer, hey, so this is like, this is how the conversation goes. Okay, this is how the conversation goes in what we call demand fulfillment selling. A customer already knows what they want, and me as a salesperson, what I want to, how I want to engage the client is around my product, because I've accepted the idea that they, they know what they want. Okay, so I say, hey, 
hello, Mr. Customer, I'm Canadian, look at my socks. Nice to meet you. Um, reframe. Hey, so listen, let's get down to business here, let's start. I'm going to pass this over to my SE, my technical guy, he's going to show you the product, and I'm going to check my email and hang out here until, uh, until he's done, and then come out, I'll try and at the end, I'll try and close you, see if, see if you want to buy something. Okay, that's basically, sarcastically, but basically how a lot of sales conversations go. Does that ring true? And all the product people, the, the, the executives, whoever comes, product management, comes with you on the call, they sit there and they say, why is this person making so much money when that's what they do? Uh, and then I ask the same question. So we're going to talk about that. And the process kind of goes like this. Hey, we introduce the company. We do, we do a little bit of a demo in the first meeting. If we get them really interested, we do another demo. We call it a deep dive. So we take a really deep. The next time we come in, we just start right away. We don't bother with the socks. We go right into, hey, Let's show you this technology, let's get deep. So we show them deep, and then they say, you know what they say? Hey, that was really good. Let's do a POC. So the company, we back up our truck, all our resources, we go in there and spend time with the client, and we do all kinds of technical work. I don't know, a week, two weeks, a month, whatever. They give them a license, let them play with it, they gotta play with it, give it to them for as long as they want. If they decide at the end of that investment they're still interested, all right, we start to build what we call champions, someone who's really, this is, our, this is our person who's going to deliver this thing. Great. And then we go ask to see an executive. After we've done all the work, we go ask an executive for the, for, the, for, the, for the business. And we try to close it. Can I have a question? Yeah. How deep do you invest in, in, a, in a POC? 100K? In How much do we invest yeah, in a POC? Two months, three months. Is there a conversation in the company? Where is, How deep do we go? Right. Um, yes. We invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in POCs. It's probably our number one investment into the sales cycle. And uh, I'll show you in a minute, but we have a 95% win rate, deal rate, when we do a POC. So we don't do POCs like this. But it's, it's, it's a lot of investment. If you think of not just the time of the people, but the infrastructure you stand up, but also the mental investment of the organization. This is what you qualify on. You qualify on budget, initiative, technical need, fit, relationship, and hope. Okay, the win rate, the win, the win rate here is low. So you don't win a lot of the POCs that you, you don't get deals in a lot of the POCs that you, that you execute here uh, in, in this way. Uh, it's unpredictable. It's, it's hard to get your hands on it because when you qualify on technical need, right, technicians don't make enterprise decisions. It's made at the executive level based on the business value. And there's a big discount there. So 20% of the time, maybe 30% of the time, you will make the right you will make the right connection by luck. If you if you do that process that I showed you before. Um, just by luck you make the most connections. By the time you meet an executive, it's too late. You've already done all the work. So what's the point? So let's talk about a lens change about value what we do. Okay. We call it demand creation. Okay, you, you had a question about how do you create how do you create value versus versus just react off of the value we've already determined. It's basically focusing on finding acute business pain. Okay, not technical pain. That's the first step. The thing is, is it a scrape on the knee or are we taking a trip to the emergency? These are kind of the, the things we think about. And we're very skeptical about pain until we can really connect pain. Okay? So what I mean by that is a technical pain, right, doesn't necessarily mean the company needs it. The only way you know if they need it, if it connects up to a very strategic initiative or a very strategic uh, move that the company's going to make. I'll show you what I mean by that and how we look at that. This is the first thing, is looking at pain and evaluating it. Okay, we spend a ton of time training our people on looking and understanding, being able to find pain and know that it's the right pain. Okay, so we call it a high impact problem. A high impact problem is like one that the CEO talks about. Now the CEO is not going to talk about Perfecto and, and testing applications. Okay, but the CEO of Domino's Pizza talks about the digital transformation they're trying to make and that how they're going to differentiate themselves from the market on not on the quality of their pizza, 
but on how well they interact with their clients. Digitally. Okay. Now, testing applications has a lot to do with whether they're going to be successful there. And there's many layers in between. That's a high impact problem. And then you find someone who cares about it. We call them champions. And those people, um, those people uh, have a personal stake in the success. And that personal stake isn't, I want to do a good job. The personal stake is, I don't want to lose my job. Or um, I'm trying to get promoted. Or I'm very ambitious and I need to accomplish this next thing. Or whatever. Okay? It's about the personal. When you have a high impact problem and a person who's connected, you have a pain. Otherwise, you have interesting information. Okay? We make it very distinct. If that makes sense, is that too detailed? But it's really important. To before we start talking about the processes we use, you won't, you won't make the connection to what I'm talking about. So this is really, really important. And I think no matter what your organization is, you got to figure this out. You got to figure out before you go hire a bunch of salespeople what what pain is to you. Where's the pain? How do you connect it to your customer strategies? Yeah, I mean the best salespeople in the world, okay, the best salespeople in the world. That's really when you when you when you dig inside them and figure out what actually makes them tick. What they're really good at doing is finding and connecting pain. Okay, they're not really great. If anyone, I can teach anyone how to make a pitch. Right? That, that, that's, 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 that's just a skill. Okay, but it's great salespeople. They, they, they break apart the organization. They understand it's just a group of people. And those people have relationships inside. They have to figure them out. And when they figure them out and map them and apply high impact business problems, there's money. Lots of it. So that's, that's really what they do. That's that. If there's an art in selling, that's it. Okay. That's what you got to interview for. So we have to skillfully move off of the solution back into requirements to really understand pain. I can't, when I'm talking, I cannot understand pain. Only when I'm listening. When I'm doing a demo, I'm learning nothing. When I learn nothing, I have no idea if there's value. So all of, the only option I have is to move this way. To continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper into technical discussions that don't lead me to understand. When I go that way, I learn everything. And that way, we can qualify. The most important thing here is we can qualify where to spend our time. So this is our sales process here that we use. We intro, we, we do value-based pipeline generation. Our individual salespeople spend 20% of their time dialing the phone and sending emails to get meetings for themselves. Okay, we have a BDR organization that, that does the rest, but they, they look after a significant portion of their own pipeline generation. Like they do the outbound? They do their outbound. <coughs> yes. Yeah. And they get augmented with the, with the BDRs. The reason they do that is because in the process, two things, in the process of learning and understanding the message they're going to the client with, they actually internalize the value they bring. Okay, and they get real feedback. Like send 100 emails, make 100 calls, and get no feedback, or get no positive response, you're getting feedback. It's not working. Okay, so we need to refine. That's the way you connect them to the value is make them do pipeline generation. The best will do it uh, because they see value to do it whether you tell them to or not. It's the rest you have to really force. You need process around it. We spend Mondays in the office, pipeline generation. Even the guys that make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in our organization, they spend Monday in the office dialing, smiling and dialing. Okay, so we do that. Then we go and we do deep level discovery with the client to understand pain. We're looking for pain. We're helping them understand the mapping. And the amazing thing about this process is we actually teach the customer how to think about their problem uh, in, this, in, the, in this stage. They don't really, they think about it like technical problems sometimes and you have, to, you have to kind of adjust their lens. So we learn a lot, we teach the client here. By the time we, and we basically cover high level problems. The, the idea is to uncover problems and then go up high really quick without a lot of effort to validate whether we found a problem that's worth investing in. So it goes kind of something like, like this. Hey, nice to meet you. I like my socks. Let's reframe. Right? We want to focus on you. Before we present anything, what we really need to understand is some of your some of the challenges you're facing. Now I looked on your website 
and I saw that your CEO is really, really into digital transformation. Um, we looked and, uh, in, into some of the information we found online in the annual reports, and we came up with a hypothesis of, of value, right? We think if you get faster at delivery, for example, you could dramatically improve the number of functions you could bring to market. Can you talk to us a little bit about that before we go and show you a demo? And then they kind of go, well, I don't know, and they show me a demo, and we just kind of back off, and we use techniques to back off and back off and back. Finally, they engage, and we get the information we need to kind of help them, right? Our idea is what we want is the client to get a solution that exactly meets their needs, not sell them something they don't. And that is a really hard thing to get people's heads around because there's no trust. They don't believe you for a while. It takes some time. So we're really committed to this principle. Uh, and it's basically the foundation of, of, of what we do. Okay. So we reframe. Then we get into this whole discovery process before we kind of come back up and show them a solution. Because okay. when I say we're value-based, I really mean it. This is what this is. This is the crux of the sales cycle. Sorry, what's the average sales cycle? Well, our average cycle is 143 days long. We measure the, the average cycle in the system. If you figure in big enterprises, the paper process alone is probably 60 days. So you're, you know, you can make in 90 days you can start and, and, and move the needle. We say don't slow down to do this. Be, you know, or don't, you know, don't and don't hurry. Right? It's like slow down and move faster. Okay. If I back them up a little bit, I can actually move way faster. Okay, because I. You know that whole phase in the buying cycle? I think it's the next one. The whole phase in the buying cycle, it's back here. This whole phase gets really slow. When the customer doesn't understand what they're doing, it gets really slow. Because they don't know. I'm like, oh, $500,000 for what? I'm like, sure. How do I know? Does it meet my requirements? They get really nervous. So what do they do? They do two things. Because they're mitigating risk. What do they do? Slow down or discounts. That's right. If I don't do a good job here, I pay for it then. That's and that's the difference between fifteen thousand dollars in, 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 in average sale price and two hundred and twelve. Is the connection of value. The rest of the process is basically the same. <coughs> N plus one products, uh, is it just a product better than the than the, than the one before it? Is it like you're taking an existing process and putting it in the cloud, for example? Okay, or your product is the next generation of a tool. Okay. Or are you selling something that no one has ever bought before? And can you think, just I probably don't have to say, but can you think of those things are totally different when I think about when I think about value? A big mistake we make is we start think we actually have one of these, but we build a process to do to do this. Okay. The business case here can be TCO driven, right? It costs me X to do something. In my new world, I can do it for Y. Same process, monitor a service. There's kind of three things you gotta have. Okay, and when should we just start? You gotta have a value-based message. You gotta figure out how to go why. Someone talked about transversing the, the organization. How do, you, how do you do that? Because right? messages are different. You have different groups, have different value, think about value differently. In development, I think about something different than I would in operations and in IT, for example. Right? So those are very different. Executives think differently. You have to kind of think about how you transverse that. And then you've got to have a really good business case. Okay? The business case, when I, when I look at a company, I look at how would I as a salesperson build a business case to support my, to support my, uh, my deal. I'm going to show you how we build business cases. Uh, here, but um, that's really, really important. These things are foundational. If you build a sales organization and you don't have these things figured out, at least kind of V1, and you're going to quickly iterate to V2 and V3, uh, you, you, you're making uh, an investment in something that's going to it's, it's going to it's going to cause you problem. It's the message that you build. Okay, so we talked about value-based messaging. The first message we do at Perfecto is about is about the process of delivering code and marketing. Okay, I'm not going to take it from you. But basically what we've come up with is a way of talking about the process that, that we impact. Okay? And where the challenges are in the process. Not the solution to it, 
right? Most of the sales cycle, at least the first part, is not talking about us, but trying to talk about the customer. And this is how we do it. We draw them into a conversation about their delivery chain. Okay? And we're dropping business case elements along the way. Okay, so the first thing I look, I always look at it process first. What process am I impacting? You come up with the things that are critical to success, not about your product again. Things you need to do in order to solve that challenge. Right? And at Perfecto, there's four of them. Okay, and we, we spend the time developing these four things. Right? So think of it this way. If I'm going to if I'm going to fix this problem, for example, I need to automate. Okay? Now I don't just need to automate, I need to have a very specific way of automating the, the, the testing and so on that I do. We talk about those things. It's like setting the criteria. Okay, these things are the same in every single one of those customers across every vertical. They're the same. At this level, they're all the same. That's really important. To make sure you get it vanilla across everything that it applies. Everywhere. Okay, they need to get these four things. When you get the client bought into these four things, the rest of the sales cycle is is in relative terms a dream. Okay, because they agree to solve the problem exactly, they need the same things. And I'm not talking about features. These are not features. It's not about Perfecto or about the product. It's about what they need to solve the problem. Okay. This layer is the hardest thing to figure out. Once you get this, you're, you're in great shape. And this is what that company does. They do this for a living to help you flush this stuff out. But, you, know, you, can, you can start to think it. You come up with things that are very unique, not very unique, unique um, to you. You come up with the things about, the, now we're starting to talk about the product, why we're different. Okay? Foundationally why they're different. Not why we compete with this, this company and that company, but why our product is unique. We call them core differentiation. And it's really important because they apply to everybody. They apply to every piece of all the company, all the competitors. Okay. It's, it's the other thing I look for when I evaluate a company. What about technology can I build a, diff, a business case around that differentiate, differentiates me completely from my competition, no matter who it is? And they have to be kind of long-lasting. You have them in your product. You just haven't thought about it maybe in this way that allows you to, to build these things. The sales organization, they rally around these concepts. Okay, they, can, they, they, they know the five ways that Perfecto is unique. Ten years from now, they'll know. They'll still remember back. I get out, I'll bump into them in an airport and I'll say, "Hey, do you remember why we're different?" And they'll bang off these five things. All right, it becomes kind of like our mantra. We talk about pain um, and, and transcending the organization, different layers of pain. Pain exists, and it, 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 it can flow up and down the organization structure. It's articulated differently, but it's 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 it's, it's the connection. Remember, we talked about the connection of the dots. Pain at every level, but it's just articulated differently. That's what we call connecting the dots of, of value. And the salespeople start at the top, and they go all the way down into the technology. When you get this right, you, you can really, you can really, uh, you can really make an impact. Business cases are, like I say, critical. Um, we start. We call it a layer cake. Okay, and we start at the bottom. And we build it up. I don't know if you can read it, but if you have, if, if the first thing I, I, I sent down with one of our guys to, when I first came to help really dig in and build a business case, I, 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 I'd um, caution you against automating the building of a business case. Building the business case, again, is like doing their own pipeline generation or their own prospecting. It internalizes the value proposition of the client by kind of doing this on a, on a manual basis, in a manual way. So you start with foundational things and you work all the way up to strategic benefit. For us, it's infrastructure. The first thing is infrastructure. I can test on premise or I can test in the cloud. And there's infrastructure costs associated with both of those things. I can compare them and come up with a base ROI. Right, makes sense. The next layer is manual labor. I do this manually today, I'm gonna automate this. There's a delta. In, in effort, and I quantify it. Okay. And I think, so now you're starting to get, we find defects earlier in the process. If I find defects earlier in the process, they're less expensive. I'll show you this in two seconds. 
what I mean by that, I'll probably better way. And then we get all the way up to strategic benefit. What does it mean to your organization, Mr. Bank, if you can release functions faster? Can you close more branches quicker? Can you deliver more pizza? But if you stop at the bottom, without getting to the top, you're never going to get into the executive suite. If all you do is quantify the top level, you're never going to get buy-in from the technical folks. So the business case needs to transcend these things. It's really important to spend a lot of time and flush out and figure out where you add value. Because the reason why we focus on business cases is that business cases are the business articulation of, of benefit. It's how business universal language. And you have to have it in every sales campaign. Every sales campaign has a business case. Every single one. So there's kind of four operational things, and I won't know, I can maybe even just stay here on this slide in, in how you do this, right? With someone I was having a conversation before about recruiting, right? Finding A players, uh, what we call A players. These are the 5%. Either they are A players or they can be A players. Uh, and that's, we spend a lot of time in the recruiting. We treat recruiting like it's like a forecast. We, we do it every day as leaders. We, f we look for people, we report on who we find, we roll them up, we measure and manage the recruiting process like, like anything else. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have the right people, you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to be able to realize the, the value of what you, what you, what you build. Uh, and that, that's universal. So we spend a lot of time in, in, in recruiting. Um, we teach them a lot. We're committed to developing them on two levels. One is, of course, on the messaging. So when you start at Perfecto, we have a, a director dedicated to development. That's what they do. And he's an ex-manager, or he was a manager who I promoted into this job, took out of the field to promote into this job because he was the best in the company at, at, at that message, building business cases. His full-time job is to take new hires and ramp them really quickly. So we built a whiteboard presentation it's about 30 minutes long. Within 30 days of being hired at Perfecto, the reps can do uh, almost a perfect job of, of that. They do it hundreds of times in the first 30 days until it's perfect. They record themselves, they submit them, they compete, and they watch each other. Uh, and it's basically what their job is in the first 30 days, other than getting organized with the people. Uh, How so, many do you hire in a typical year? New ones? Well, we're getting more and more, but 15, 20 reps, and you have everyone else in the ecosystem that supports them, and everybody knows the message. Not just the salespeople, everybody knows it. Knows it cold. Um, leadership is a big thing for me. It's what we, you know, with the leaders, is, is, it's, it's a skill, uh, and we focus on it specifically. Uh, how to lead, how to grow your career, um, and, and how, to, how to actually take people through the success that they need to take them through success. We spend a lot of time in leadership and forecast accuracy. There's no point in doing this if you can't have an accurate forecast. When I mean accurate, I mean kind of within 5-10%, um, a long time before the deals are done. Okay. Now if my close rate, for example, is 23 deals out of 161, how can I possibly accurately forecast? I can't. But if I have a 90%, 90, 95% close rate on POCs, I, you know, at the highest level I can. Okay. For me, the main reason I implemented such a rigid process is, is forecast accuracy and predictability. And this is not an overnight thing. It takes a long time. It takes a couple years to get to get to, to get there as, as we've lived. We lived through this. How do you manage the, the minutiae? Uh, the pipeline generation and so on. So one thing we do is, I say, I don't really care as much about your results. I don't care what you sell. I care what you do. Okay, your job is to run the place. Not go and tell me, trust me, I'm gonna sell my number. That doesn't count. Okay, what we do is we focus on fundamentals and executing fundamental plays. And these are basically the plays. You're very busy. You're doing eight face-to-face -face meetings with your client every week. Okay. Two of those meetings are in places we've never been before. We track it in Salesforce, we report it publicly and within the organization, 
and we and we manage we manage activity very very closely. We all build business cases. The expectation is you build five business cases in a quarter. Okay. We do POCs, technical validations, do two of those a quarter, right, and so on. These are the things that we manage on, on a on a on a week week basis, and they have an impact. So what the people know of Profeco is when they come, if their activity looks like this, okay. These are the different categories of where they're doing these activities every quarter. If it looks like this, it delivers big results. It's, it's, it's just a checklist of things without emotion, without the emotion of, that the salespeople bring into the, in, into the conversations. It's, it's, um, and so it's an acronym. It basically means metrics, economic buyer, decision process, decision criteria, have I identified pain? Do I have a champion? Do I know my competition is champion? This is kind of like our, our fabric. Every deal gets put up against this. And we go through these reviews to understand where our gaps are. So for example, do I really understand the pain? Do I have a business case? Is it measurable? That's M and I. Have I met the economic buyer? Do I have an ongoing dialogue with the E in that If not, need actions to, to go in. So we basically do this constantly. One thing I think you got to kind of think about as you're thinking about enterprise sales is where is your company, where does your product fit on, 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 the, on the scale of kind of like simple, adaptable, widget type integration into someone's process? Or on the other end, a, you know, a basically a process enabling type tool that, that, that basically is valueless without usage and without uh, integration into a process. And, and those things are very different. Like, you know, for example, um, you know, I, 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 I interview lots of guys that sell storage. Okay? Now storage is an understood thing, right? There are intricacies that make the technologies better, but storage is understood. Okay? Or Microsoft Office is understood. Right? You can sell Microsoft Office with inside salespeople through partners because the value prop is, is simple. Uh, or at least it's, it's well understood. Even even ERP, very complex but completely understood. So partners, global SIs, they can sell that. Okay. If you're selling a product that no one's bought before, and it's not it's not intuitive, it's, it's you don't just plug it in and all of a sudden it brings value to you, to your life. You have to think about how you how do you how do you connect the people who are buying with the value, and that's where enterprise selling is really really because not you, you can't do it any other. That's why you run into a glass ceiling. You get to a point where without the interpersonal relationship, without the connection of the dots between value and the product, you stop. And that's where enterprise selling picks up. And it'll be different in every, in every place. When I look for a business to go and do what I do, I look for the high, highly complex. I want the ones that, I want the ones that um, they need a lot of, of integration. We call it connecting the dots from the business value down, way down into the product. Does that make sense? When you go through the life cycle, when you're very small, how do you do it versus when you get to scale? Right. At scale, you better know. <coughs> when you're early, you don't know. So you gotta try a bunch of stuff. You just, you're hiring different salespeople. You know, you're hiring maybe domain experts who can really help you figure out your framework, where value is. Later on, when you're at scale, you better know, and it better be defined. Otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of money pointing a lot of people in the wrong direction. So that's, there is only one way. And you know, the entrepreneurs, they know. I mean, that's, that's you have, that, that's why you that's why you build a company. So it's in there. What we did at Perfecto is we had to suck it out of it. It was really hard, it's really hard. It's still really hard. Because they built amazing products. Okay, and they and they and they love the product, right? It's 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 it, you know, but I don't. <laughs> I love value, and so it's 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 where those things come together, right? So when you're really early, what I would what I really encourage you to do, if is 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 as you're as you're growing, is really focus on where is value, not how cool your features are and who needs them, but what where's the value? Go talk to the clients about the value it brings. How do they go to the CIO? or whatever and talk about the product and how it connects. You'll learn a lot if you, if you, if you 
get out of that discussion around the capability.